The last few weeks have seen an extraordinary series of attacks on our democracy. A parliament elected from 46 million of us was unlawfully suspended by a Prime Minister elected from 160,000. Judges have been threatened by a, a number 10 source and those of us who have sought to protect the only institution in our constitution with a UK-wide democratic mandate have been subject to death threats and some of us have had our home addresses published. I am delighted today that the Supreme Court has protected the foundational principle of any democracy which is the right of members of parliament to do their jobs for which they were elected. There is much yet to be done to protect our democracy. For myself, I am very grateful to the exceptional legal team and to the almost 8,000 small donors who enabled this case to go ahead. The victory um, is theirs. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is an absolutely momentous decision. The Supreme Court has unanimously ruled that Parliament has not been proroled. Yes! Yes! So there is nothing to stop us, members of Parliament such as myself and my colleagues, from resuming immediately the important job of scrutinising this minority Tory government as we hurtle towards Brexit. As a Scot and a Scots lawyer, I am absolutely delighted that the United Kingdom Supreme Court has agreed with Scotland's Supreme Court that the prorogation was unlawful and therefore it is null and void. This is a huge victory for the rule of law and for democracy and it's very much in keeping with the Scottish constitutional tradition that neither the government nor indeed the monarch are above the law. As regards Mr Boris Johnson, the highest court in the United Kingdom has unanimously found that his advice to prorogue this parliament, his advice given to Her Majesty the Queen was unlawful, his position is untenable and he should have the guts for once to do the decent thing and resign.